Grab bread for the little niggas. Hot scars made away with shake up. Why you need keys on the table? Here you go, create another fable. Grab bread for the little niggas. Hot scars made away with shake up. Why you need keys on the table? I don't think you did. <laughs> Proper, baby, can you hit me? Baby, get pasta, drink it out of sip. Welcome to the introduction to this episode. Yes, the intro portion. It's uh, It's been about three weeks since we've dropped an episode. How dare us? Yeah, I've gotten like six gray hairs in that time. Really? It's been awesome. Why? No, I haven't really. Are you stressed out? No, because I'm getting older. It's been three weeks. I'm old now. Oh, wow. You're really... I age fast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this episode... That you're about to listen to. Yes. Oh, by the way, we're jamming out to some Yishwa. I think that's how you say it. Yishwa. We played their music on here before. It's du- or it's Y S H W A. How would you pronounce that? Yishwa. 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 I don't know. It's probably something totally different. It's probably actually pronounced like. Nobody knows. We spelled it out at least. We spelled out each individual letter, so that's good. We've got that going for us. Um, but this uh, little Jimmy Jam we're jamming out to is called Do It For Me. Yeah. Yishwa or Freight Train, whatever the fuck, however whatever. The fuck you say it. Um, this episode you're about to uh, partake in is with Kevin L. Johnson. Yeah. Actor. All around, off super the nice dude. You He's can on, check him out on Ozark. Yes, on Netflix. Netflix. With Jason Bateman, Laura Linney. There's rumors oh. that season two is coming out in like a month or so in July, sometime in July. That's when the no. first season came out. The second season. No, did he? I think he said around maybe September, August, September. Is what he said in the episode. Hmm. I still think they're gonna pull it off. Well, get the, it, it's get it done early. Filming, but I don't know. We'll see. It's coming. It's we coming. We know that. And season one is badass. We still have to watch the last episode of season one. But uh, yes. Kevin L. Johnson plays the the owner of the real estate agency in the Same. Ozarks. And uh, Jason Bateman's wife works for him. And uh, That's yeah. all we can tell you. We don't want to give away anything. Okay, yeah. No spoilers. Um, but it's a really, really good show. So if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend checking it out. Yeah, check um, it out. And there's also a movie that he's in, American Animals. Yes. That just came out recently, too. Yep. I think that's in theaters right now. Mm-hmm. So check so, that out. Uh, yeah, Kevin O. Johnson. He's an awesome guy. Yeah, um, it was a fun time sitting down with him and chatting with him. We talked for uh, about two hours and um, got to know the guy. Yeah, it was good. It was yeah. great. Yeah, so we hope you enjoy it. Yeah, we sure did. You better. <laughs> All right, here we go with Kevin L. Johnson. Now, tonight's adventure into the unknown. Shut up and sit down. Hey, Frenzy. Hey, Sarge. You are listening to Sarge Approved. You are. You already knew that. Yes, thank you. You, you push play. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Frenzy, who we got tonight? Well, tonight we have an actor who you may have seen on the Netflix original series Ozark and also is in the movie that just released, I think, June 1st, American Animals. We have Kevin L. Johnson. How are you, Kevin? Hey, what's going on? Hey, we're super excited to chat with you. Awesome. I like this music. It's uh, it's like I'm about to get ready like to go on stage or something. Yeah, it pumps you up. Pumps you up. 
<laughs> soak it in. Yeah. It's been a while since we've done a show. It's been like three weeks, I think. It has. It's been a while. It's summertime, though. It's here in Minnesota. Yeah. So. <laughs> Shit happens. Mm-hmm. We usually do an episode a week. Yep. But uh, it's been like three weeks. It has. Some people are upset. Yeah. Well, you know. Winter time, it's easier for. Wait, I mean, we're, we're back with the vengeance. Yeah, we have Kevin Johnson. We Kevin do L Johnson to usher us back. Yeah, what does L stand <laughs> for, Kevin? Can you say? Wait. Uh, it's um, it's kind of funny. Uh, it's Lloyd, right? But yes. uh, perfect. But um, when I was a kid, I was always I always thought it was Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, yeah, Kevin Lord Johnson. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, that's a badass middle name. So did you have like a bunch of extra confidence because you thought your middle name was Lord? Like, yes, I am your Lord. I was just wondering like why my parents would use, use that as a middle name. Yeah. I was like, okay, maybe I'm destined for greatness. Who knows? Yeah, like, that's very arrogant of you, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> there was, uh, there was, when I was in the army in basic training, I, there was a guy in my company who had his uh, his honest to god birth given name was Alpha Omega and then I can't remember what his last name was but his middle name was what? Omega his first name was Alpha yeah it was right on his right on his uniform I can't remember what his last name was but um wow yeah Alpha Omega <laughs> what is yeah, what, what genre would his yeah what, but O isn't the phonetical Omega isn't the phonetical alphabet letter alpha is no no, no. it has nothing to do with the military no i don't but so what was their jo- what was the genre that they were interested in is that like genre? Astro- astronomy alpha omega like there's got to be alpha omega is god oh it is yeah in what world <laughs> like god that's what that's like a that's one of the many names for god alpha omega i don't know what why what <laughs> yeah it's the Greek. It's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet and a title of Christ and God in the Book of Revelation. Yeah. So it has Sounds like multiple either a meanings. bad guy in a comic book or a, or somebody who comes back and saves everybody. Yeah. Well, that's crazy though because if, if it, it's the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet, so you think of Greek times and all of the these amazing people that are supposed to be from God or from hell or whatever. Right, like what that's like Greek mythology. Yeah, like they come from the clouds, or they come from the sun, or yeah, they come like from whatever. Zeus, but you know, like Zeus was basically God, and then there was was it Hades? Very, it's a very vengeful God. I hear he's didn't he like uh, like Medu- was it Medusa the uh, the the, the, pale, the snakes like, the snake chick? How he how he raped her, and that's how she became oh, Medusa. Zeus so really, was a total like, douchebag. Oh yeah, he was a complete asshole. Yeah, sure. he 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 banged everybody. He got <laughs> everybody pregnant. He had so many illegitimate kids running around. Like I think wasn't uh, um, Hercules one of his like bastard kids? He like banged some Earth woman, some human, and had a half breed. Probably. I mean, but there's a ton of <laughs> there's a ton of people that were supposedly like the mythology thing. So There's Arabian, drama. Armenian, Aztec, Celtic, Christian, Chinese, Egyptian, Greek. There's so many different types of mythology, but obviously, like the Greek one is one of the main ones that yeah. most people are, cool know about. One. That's the cool one. <laughs> it's the one all the movies are about. Yeah, <laughs> it's action movies. Well, you can actually go to Greece or Rome and see some buildings that maybe were a part of that. No. Yeah, they were part of Greek mythology that like Zeus hung out in. Bang yeah. Shit. Like the building spang that she's bang chicks in? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Medusa's just like hanging out there <laughs> haunting the place. Yep. <laughs> she's like, I had some snakes. You can buy if you want. Um, so, uh, Kevin, you, like Frenzy said, you're on uh, fucking Ozark, which uh-huh. is, is um, a pretty badass show. We actually have. We haven't watched the final episode yet of, no. season, one, of season one. Yeah, we so, were saving it. Yeah, and um, but wow, what a show! Yeah, the uh, not to give anything away, the final episode is almost like a movie within itself. Uh, it's like an hour and a half. 
Mm. Uh, That's awesome. Been, it's crazy because I've had it saved um, under, you know, you, you have your lists of your kind of video venues that you or tv venues that you watch things from like netflix amazon hulu whatever yeah but you just have like your list and you save it because you're like that looks badass i'm gonna watch that but then half the time when i go to bed it's like i basically take a half an hour to choose what i'm gonna watch i go through that (laughs) list it takes forever but then once i decide on one and i get hooked on a show it's like oh i can't wait to get home and watch it Ozark has been on our Netflix list for, what, maybe a year? Yeah, probably. And one day I finally decided, like, I, I've been wanting to watch it because I've been hearing from everybody, like, the show's so badass, it's so great, it's a really good show. And I finally one night decided, okay, I'm going to at least try the first episode to see how it is. But I've been waiting because I figured it was a show you would want to watch mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. And But I watched the first episode just to check it out and immediately got hooked. And, awesome. uh... And so, yeah, and you, I have, uh, let's see here, there's there's a couple moments, uh, your character on the show, you play, um, what's the name of the character? Sam. Sam, how do you say the last name? More. Germany. Germany, yeah. Um, you're, Who's a realtor. You own the real estate company, like, in that area, in the Ozarks. I do. And you work, uh, what's, uh, what's her name, Laura Linney's character? works for you yeah. Wendy. Wendy. Yeah, yeah Wendy. So you work with her a lot. Uh-huh. Um, but there's a couple moments here. Where is it? That that are kind of in my opinion shining moments uh, for your character on that show. And I I want to play a little clip here. Okay. Um here's here's the first one. Excuse me, is there anybody here? Oh yeah. Don't be shy. You know what to do. Come on, babe. It's all for you. Just gobble it up. Oh, yeah, get after it. Ooh. Hey! Hey, um, I'm Sam Dermody. <laughs> <laughs> How did I know you would choose that scene? Yeah. Holy cow. <laughs> I, I had a feeling that you uh, you knew that one was coming. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's classic. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. And, and it's the introduction of your character for the show. Huh? <laughs> uh huh. Right, without giving away too much, you wanna you break down that scene a little bit? What we what we listened to there? What was happening? Because you um, your imagination could run wild just from the audio. <laughs> well, it was uh, so Jason uh, Jason Bateman directed the first two episodes, okay. uh, so I got to work with him in episode two as a director. So that was cool. That's uh, awesome. Yeah, and um. He was definitely open to improv. Um, he loves letting the actor kind of do what they're there to do and just, you know, do their stuff. Um, and so that was a lot of improv, like, <laughs> where it's just like, oh, uh, because he was like, yeah, you just, yeah, go to town, Kevin. You're, uh, you know, just have fun. No censor. Just <laughs> so the gobble it up was kind of hit. I think he said that when he was giving me examples. And I was like, that's pretty funny. I got to say that. Um, <laughs> just gobble it up. <laughs> but uh, so some people, funny story is uh, some people didn't realize even when you see the dog come out and lick my toes, um, yeah. some people thought that something else was happening uh, <laughs> with the dog. If you know where I'm going with this, yeah. And, mm-hmm. and was I was like, just on your toes. Yeah, and I was like, how how would my character be redeemable? after that if you thought that that was what Sam was doing right so I was like no yeah he's got peanut butter on his toes you see it's a quick pan but you know you can see the (laughs) it would go to a dirty place it would definitely be an entirely different path that your character would end up going down with if if that dog was licking your balls or something (laughs) but I could uh, save save a kid and I'd still be the the character who had his balls licked by his dog. Yeah, know. peanut butter balls. I don't, I don't think you'd <laughs> no come back from that. I don't think you'd be completely unredeemable. I think that people could learn to love that character. Oh yeah, there's been plenty of characters out there. Think of, think back to like uh, like a, like Kenny Powers from Eastbound and Down. Remember that show? Did you ever see that one? Uh, I saw a few episodes. I don't have. I didn't have. A, it came on HBO, right? Uh, yeah, I think it was an HBO show. 
Yeah, I didn't have HBO when that was when that was on, so I didn't see too many. I, I think I might have seen <laughs> something in a buddy's house. The, the only way that you could honestly come back from that is depending on what your character does moving forward after that. If they like, just yeah. kind of sit in the background and they don't do a whole lot, it's kind of like you always be the peanut butter balls guy. But if you yeah. if you make moves and some stuff happens, then you can redeem yourself. Like like maybe there's a scene later on in the season where his his um his affinity for having his balls licked <laughs> peanut butter balls licked by a dog somehow saves somebody's life later on in the season yeah or saves a dog demon. maybe like it's because diabetic of that, shock because of that act somehow a life is saved yeah. would that redeem him maybe there would have to there would have to be like a callback you know he would have yeah. my character would have to realize oh like what he had done at the beginning yeah i think be redeemable Yes, yeah, there'd have to be some kind of remorse. So or, that yeah. scene would, that opening scene of you getting, you know, being introduced to the show would include foreshadowing, you're saying. There would be foreshadowing in that scene. Interesting. <laughs> that, was a, that was a scene I did in the audition piece, too. That was awesome. <laughs> was That's <it>? awesome. <laughs> yeah. That's the scene? <laughs> that was, yeah, that was in the audition piece. Oh, man. Um, I think a, a good scene that you could have done, which is also the second clip here, um, another shining moment for your character on the show is this one right here. Can I can I ask you a question? Why do you have to be such a constant 24-7 nagging incessant fucking bitch? <laughs> My entire fucking adult life, I've listened to your garbage that you tell me about myself. Is this back to that college thing? <laughs> you never would have survived out of state. Oh, your TV mom. Oh, she's awful. Awesome. Yeah, that, was, that was fun with her. She, yeah, she's cool. been in a bunch of other stuff. I feel like I recognized her. Yeah, yeah, she works a lot. Um, she was in uh, uh she was in that sh- uh, the movie. Um, I think it was called Loving. Okay. Did you ever see that movie? It was about the uh, the interracial couple back in the um back in the sixties, and they like went to trial because it wasn't legal in Virginia at the time. Oh, wow. No, I but I need to watch it now. That yeah, sounds, it's a good, that uh, sounds cool. It's, it's a good, slow uh, uh, movie, I would say. It's the same director that did, like, Take Shelter, okay. Mud. Um, yeah. I'll have to check it out. He, well, yeah, I'm she su- played the mom in that. In the she mom in that. Mom. Okay. Well, I'm super impressed with your whole Ozark thing, like your new movie, but I want to talk about when you were on One Tree Hill. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. I, knew, I knew that was going to come up. So, Did you see my scenes in One Tree Hill? Uh, oh, you, it, had, you, you had scenes on there. Yeah, okay. I've, he's had three, three right, in 2011? Uh, I was, yeah, I played a camera guy. Yeah, um, there's three of them. Oh, I thought you were an actual camera guy. No, he played set. a camera guy. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. That makes way more sense. That's it's a frenzy for, for our listeners who aren't aware. Oh, God. There was a period where, f- how many seasons of that show are there? Like I binge-watched, like, all the 11? shows from my, like, adolescent years. So yeah. Beverly Hills now, 2 and 0, and then One Tree Hill, back-to-back. Yep. Back yep. In, like, a short amount of time. Yes, Binge watch the shit out of some One Tree Hill. <laughs> yeah, to the point where my kid was like, "What are you watching?" Oh, One Tree Hill. Good. <laughs> terrible, terrible show. No, it's not. <laughs> that was uh, my first uh, TV show. Yeah, I know. That's so, awesome. That's like the best stuff. ever first TV show to be on. A little, a little, <laughs> a little known secret. Secret time. Uh, when I was overseas in Iraq. Me and my fellow soldiers at one point ended up watching like the first two or three seasons of One Tree Hill. We would like watch it together. <laughs> yeah. We ran out of shit to watch. Okay, whatever. You <laughs> liked serious. it. My sister and her husband, their first wedding anniversary, they went and went to like the One Tree Hill area on yeah, the East Coast down. and like went there for their anniversary vacation. And like my uh, my brother in law bought a sweatshirt from so lame. from uh that was totally, the garage. That was your sister. Yeah, my sister. That was totally her idea. Well, yeah, but he wanted to do it too. Like he has a sweatshirt from <laughs> I can't remember his name right now. What? Um, Chad Michael Murray's stepdad. Come on. That became his stepdad. 
the the garage that he owned. He has a sweatshirt the guy from that there. Died? Yeah. Little spoiler alert. <laughs> well, you should know by now. <laughs> That's super lame. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's not. It's awesome. I, I, there's gonna be, there's gonna be uh, listeners who are like diehard One Tree Hill fans. <sighs> yeah, you're gonna get hate mail. What you can send you? them directly to sargeapproved at gmail dot com. Attention, Sarge. One Tree Hill is the greatest show ever made. <laughs> How dare you speak ill of that show? It's fine. <laughs> it's not for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a dude show. No. So you, so you, Kevin, you live, you live in Georgia, and Ozark is filmed in Georgia. It is as well, right? Um, oh yeah. Uh, what's I, don't tell me. I'm gonna. Look, I I heard the the name of the lake that it's recorded on or filmed on, but I can't think of it right now. It's not a secret. It's not like Lake Altoona, is it? Bingo. Yes. Oh, yeah. Nailed it. Georgia. Where at in Georgia? I was stationed in Georgia for a little while. Um, I shot most of my stuff in uh near Woodstock. Um. And uh, Loganville, Loganville, Georgia. Okay. I was in Augusta. I'm trying to. I'm so bad with my geography, to be honest with you. Um, I can't remember. It's uh, I guess it's closer to Atlanta where we're shooting the stuff. It's not too far from Atlanta. I don't think. Loganville is a city in Walton and Gwinnett Counties, Georgia. It's a population of ten thousand four hundred fifty-eight people. Um, it is thirty-two miles west. Of downtown Atlanta, so that's a, yeah. that's a fairly small town. Is is it hard with uh, with the residents and stuff when you guys are trying to film things? Um, well, uh, I guess at the um, at the real estate office, they didn't have to wait on like car. They didn't have to stop cars from going by and stuff like that because that's just like um, production value for yeah. cars going by. So there was, unless it was like something, you know, like a big semi where you, you know, murk, the murk. audio count out or whatever. Yeah. But for the most part, uh, at least at the real estate office, you know, like a plane goes over or birds are chirping. It was, it was pretty easy, you know, with the audio and everything. But with, with the popularity of the show, I got to imagine that you don't get people that are like, when you guys are trying to film, you don't get like people and showing up and trying to get a peek of what's going on, things like that? Um, not for season one, because it was still, you know, not a lot of people knew what it was going to be, because Netflix is very uh, hush-hush about stuff until, like, the very end, and then they just, you know, promote the crap out of it, okay. which was awesome. Um, but for season two, yeah, I think people showed up, and, you know, you saw people kind of watching from their balconies, or, you know, if we were filming at a hotel or whatever that's um, cool so yeah, it, so it's got a cult following now i would say it's, oh it absolutely yeah. has i think that um the the net the kind of netflix original things are the series and shows and movies even are kind of they can be hit or miss and then i think that not that ozark wasn't like it probably wasn't an immediate hit right away it was just kind of I don't know. Um, it feels like it was. It, it, it was, but I think that like it be, it became popular right away. But maybe other people like saved it in the list kind of thing to watch, yeah. and then it became. And then once people, more people started watching it, it was like holy shit! Like it's it's pretty. It's very well done. Like it's very well directed. Like it's it's very suspenseful. Like I I'll, I'll put on shows that I, I'll save on Netflix and I'll just play them in the background when I'm cooking or cleaning around the house or whatever. But like with Ozark, I'm like I have to sit in front of the TV like two inches away and pay attention to every single thing. Because yeah. even in you the opening, sit that close though to the TV. Yeah, it's, it's bad, bad for my eyes. I know. But yeah. like the opening yeah. monologue where it has the different the four different pictures of and, and I'm always like, what are they? Okay. It's binoculars, it's a ladder, and it's a rat, and it's whatever. And I'm like, okay, that's going to be yeah. what's in the episode. Like that, I think that's super cool and very unique. It's um... you notice that it spells out Ozark too, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. But okay. I think it how it's oh, cool how it? it changes every episode yeah. too. All oh, the little pictures spell mm-hmm. out Ozark. Yeah, how it's uh-huh. split. It's it's split in the quadrants of four. Right, but I didn't know that the actual pictures spelled yeah. like letters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. It's super cool. 
and it's visually yeah. appealing it's i mean where it's where, where it's taped is beautiful like it it's in my opinion it's it's kind of like netflix's breaking bad you yeah i, I mean? could see that yeah well it gets compared to breaking bad a lot because of uh and i think and jason's talked about this too um you know middle-aged white guy family mm-hmm. and he's, he's got that he's vibe trying, that... yeah he's trying to and he but I think in this way he's already broken bad. That's the difference, you know. Like, right. and the kids know about it pretty pretty early on. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's the thing I noticed about it was that it didn't it didn't get it didn't give a whole lot of it just got into it right away. It didn't give you a whole bunch of of backstory or things feeding yeah. into when you know like with Breaking Bad it took a while before well, he yeah. actually and, broke bad and did something but Breaking Bad was more he was discovering himself and like breaking himself to be able to be comfortable with what he was doing or with I think Jason Bateman's character like he already knows like he's just like why fuck yeah. around like I'm this is what I've been doing and I'm gonna keep doing so I'm just gonna be honest about it like he knows he maybe knows more of who he is versus Walter White's character in Breaking Bad. Like, he didn't know who he was when he was doing yeah. it. You know? You find out, like, in, uh, um, I think maybe episode eight, like, his pat, like, uh, you know, how he got into the whole money laundering thing. Mm-hmm. But Jason's, uh, Jason said that, you know, that he wanted season one to be, like, a ten part movie. So, you know, so it has an ending. Um, doesn't leave you hanging or anything i'll tell you that i know you haven't seen the last episode but it doesn't leave you hanging <laughs> yeah uh because you know in case it didn't go another season they didn't want to leave any loose ends you know yeah, yeah. which That's is cool. i think is awesome because so season two is already filmed i'm assuming yeah we're done right and uh-huh. i i know you obviously probably can't say much but can you can you affirm whether or not your character is going to have uh, uh, an even bigger role in the second season. So that's what I'm hoping for. It, and it kind of <laughs> feels that way, especially, you know, near the end there, the end of the first season, like you're, you're, you're getting more and more, um, you know, screen time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Those last two episodes of mine were like when I saw the script and when I was on set, I said, if all this makes it in, Mm-hmm. This could be really good for my career, and you never know because they could have cut a lot of that stuff if they wanted. Um, but I, and this is just me as an actor, like getting in my head before the show actually came out. I was like, man, what if they cut? Like, uh, you know, yeah, I show her the house in, in episode two, mm-hmm. but um, but if she doesn't decide to come work for me, like they completely cut that, then yeah. I'm done. I, there's no more. Sam and, it's and I like, thought about that in my head because I'm a because I because I think like that way for some reason I don't know <laughs> and it's not like they're sending you emails letting you know if they cut your scenes or not either right you just have to wait and see well I, I stayed in contact with um, a lot of the people behind the camera some of the producers you know just try to get a feel and they're all and they were all really cool too to let me know like yeah everybody loves the stuff back at Netflix um, so I knew I knew that it was I felt good about it and when I when I was at the premiere and then because um, we had the premiere in New York I get back to my uh, my uh, my Airbnb yes. in Harlem <laughs> yes. and I before I go to bed because it's after 12 o'clock and it's streaming I just went straight through all the episodes because, you know, I just, I went to the scenes. I was like, okay, I made it. There it is. That yeah. scene's in. That's, I couldn't help but do that. And then, of course, I watched the whole series, but <laughs> I had to, I had to double check yeah, just to see if everything made it in. And it was, and it was good. I um, think, I think it's super cool how, um, I mean, obviously, like, having a ser- an original Netflix series is, is awesome. Like, you can't discount that at all i just i i don't know i just think especially with the second season that's coming out of ozark like there's no release date yet like it's Did summer the, i think it says no nope, there's no release date they don't they they haven't given a date yet it's it's uh, it's co- it, it's uh i don't have an official release date but i know it's um uh you know i'm thinking august september yeah okay. what i'm thinking 
cool. So that's so, not too but, far away. But, but there was like a Netflix event last weekend, and it was yeah. it was like a the FY. How do you say it? Is it do you FYSE? I think. Yeah. Um, event You're, and it's like Emmy. Uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the Emmys because they're doing a lot of promotion, trying to get Ozark and. Yeah, you know, Orange is New Black and all those shows. Exactly. So it was kind of like an exhibit, a Netflix exhibit kind of thing. And uh, Jason Bateman gave kind of little tidbits, like threw a bone or two out about season two. But that was, but that's cool that he can just be like, yeah, I don't have a release date yet for you bitches, but mm, you're going to still pay attention. And now I'm giving you a bone, so you're going to pay even more attention. Like it's you, getting you know, it. I think they know, they just don't want to say yet. Like they have an idea. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I I think I'm that's cool. Like I like that. It's 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 a, a unique. It's different. You know, it's it's different than anything else that they that's been put out. Like I'm I'm a huge fan of Handmaid's Tale on Hulu, and oh. they they release an episode every Wednesday, and you're just like, yup. And I love that that they do that. But it's kind of kind of I don't know controlling your own show and. It's it's within you know the Netflix, Hulu, Amazon genre, but you still get to kind of control how it's released and information that goes out about it. That's that's pretty unique. So, yeah, I would. Say, oh, go ahead, Sarge. Um, you didn't answer the question. Oh yeah, that's, I did a I did a political move there, right? <laughs> um, no, I was coming back to it. Uh, I do think I saw somewhere. Uh, this isn't giving anything away, like what I'm not supposed to say or anything, because it's out, it's online. Um, I think it, I think it might be the next Netflix Life uh, on Twitter said it, but we're looking. I think there's going to be something in the next week or two, a teaser with the date release. I'm just <gasps> excited because I'm um, waiting for. But by the end of the month, there should be, you know teaser because jason's doing a lot of press right now and yeah it has something to do with arrested development as well but yeah uh i think it also has to do with ozark because he's talking a lot about it because i've seen a lot of videos all right let's do an over under wait wait wait. the question i'm referring to is are we going to see more of you in season two oh (laughs) oh um i can't say you Uh, can't say you can't say it all come on i'll come back Back. At least one more scene. Oh yeah, no, I'm back. I'll let you know I'm back for sure. Do they? Do you die in season? You two? can't say that. <laughs> oh. Try to see if you let it slip. <laughs> Shit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Did you know that there is a um, Sam? Do you, Sam? <laughs> I just called you Sam as your character. Kevin, do you have any pets? Do you? Uh, Oh a, yeah, uh, well dog, I don't, like but my sweet. roommate does. Um, by the way, do y'all watch? Uh, do y'all watch The Gifted? Have you no. seen The Gifted on Fox? No, uh, uh-uh. uh. We don't have regular it's TV. A Marvel... Oh, okay. It's a, well, it's a Marvel show. You can find it on Hulu. Um, okay. But, uh, the Gifted. All right, I'm yeah. checking it out. I'm adding it to my list. Yeah, she plays a. Uh, she plays one of the superheroes. Um, oh, sweet. Sage. Sage. Um, okay. Yeah. But we have uh, we have three cats. Um, one of them's Devo. That's the boy cat. And then Marty and McFly are the girl cats. I'm that's great. awesome. <laughs> Back to the future reference. Did you yeah. know that um, the uh, Robert Zemeckis that directed and whatever created Back to the Back to the Future movies, he said he has said that he will refuse to let anyone redo any of the Back to the Future movies until he's dead. Wait, re- like the scripts? Yeah, just they he would never let anyone redo them. Like he like owns all the rights to the movie, so no remakes, like no nothing oh, until okay. after he passes away. Like a reboot. Oh, okay. No reboots. But Which would be terrible. There would be no reason to redo them. No, you can't. Right? I don't want to reboot classic. That's I don't. Yeah. Who could possibly? Unless I'm, unless I'm part of it, I'm okay with it. Though. Unless you're Marty McFly. <laughs> if, if the, <laughs> I'll take, I, yeah, that's cool with me. Man. Okay. How about this? Here, if the fate of the world depended on a Back to the Future remake, a remake, Ugh, don't do who, it. Who would play? Who would be the best option if we had to try to pull off the best possible reboot? We could. The fate of the world. Currently. On it. Who would play Marty McFly and who would be Doc Brown? Who could we get to replace? And him? who would be Biff? Oh that's, yeah, good, that's a good one too. Um, yeah. 
Oh, well, I guess they're high school, right? So Marty go younger. I guess uh, for me, who's gonna be Marty McFly? Uh, I don't know. I'm not. I like don't. I'm days. not up up keeping with the teenage. <laughs> How old are you, Kevin? Oh, good lord! I'm. Uh, I'll be 36 June 25th. Okay, oh, so you're like our age, baby. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah. Who would be Marty McFly? I don't know who Marty McFly would be. I, I'm imagining Doc Brown would be Nick Nolte from his <laughs> his mugshot days. Probably uh, not now. His, He'd be a little uh, angry, though. <laughs> yeah. It'd be creepy. He'd be an angry Doc. Like, why is Nick Nolte hanging out with this high school kid? <laughs> well, why is Doc hanging out with this high school kid? Well, back then, <laughs> if Doc, like, Christopher Lloyd doesn't doesn't really scare me that much he's just <laughs> nick nolte scares you he does kind of seem like i feel like yeah nick like Nolte's a little scary robert de niro him. al pacino would scare me as doc more because they'd just be like bust out <laughs> al gone. pacino as doc brown <laughs> <laughs> i'm a big kevin i'm a big huge fan hey, of whoa. gangster movies so that's i always go to those okay oh, goodfellas oh, godfather casino like all those oh yeah um i like uh, I'm trying to think what my favorite. Well, it's not really, my favorite movie of all time. It's not a gangster movie, but it's an Al Pacino movie. It's uh, Dog Day Afternoon. That's Ooh, that's favorite. a good one. Yeah, yeah, that's my favorite one. And then uh, I'm a big Dustin Hoffman fan. Uh, you know, for well, film purposes. Yeah. It was. It was a. It was very disappointing to hear what happened because he is my favorite. He was my favorite. Well, he is. Ah, it's hard to. <laughs> if he can be because like, his look he's like got that every man kind of look yeah and, I was, well, and some... I, I'm just floored by his performances but it, it was really disappointing to hear all that stuff that came out and I was, what, I what was, were the I allegations talked... for him with Dustin Hoffman wasn't it something uh, gross ones like yeah, Kevin Spacey yeah. no not as bad as and Kevin they were, Spacey and they were definitely true there's no way they were what, what yeah they're he, definitely true what did he do yes. though it was uh, a lot of it was during uh, Death of a Salesman when he did that back in the late eighties so with John long Malcolm. Ago. But what did he do? Sexual assault. In what way? Sexual misconduct. Did he pinch some girl's ass? Um, no. I think it's more. It's a little bit deeper than that. He wasn't like roofing people. He sexually assaulted people like a female, like but what rape, does that mean? Rapish. That's such a broad term. Like sexually assault could mean you could you grab a girl's butt like that could be sexual assault. Uh, he assault he suppo- <laughs> allegedly assaulted a chick in the back of a station of a station wagon and assaulted her. So like forced rape. himself on her pretty rape. much. Yeah, oh, I don't remember that one. I know the harassment on his PA, his personal PA, because she yeah. wrote like a diary like and sent the um, the diary to her sister. So it's like this is what happened to me today. Um, blah, blah, yada yada yada. You know. He he is supposedly and, exposed himself to a sixteen year old in a hotel room. Oh, that's not good. Um. Oh, is that online somewhere? Uh, yeah, oh. it's on CNN news. A third unnamed woman says he assaulted her in the back of a station wagon and later pressured into a sexual encounter. What was he doing in a station wagon? <laughs> I don't. I have no idea. Anyways, but so yeah. so where are you originally from, Kevin? Where where did you? Have your uh, growing up days? Uh, I grew up in uh, Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Okay, so At you're you're an East Coaster. Uh huh. I was stationed in South Carolina for a while too, Columbia. Yeah, it's a very popular uh, spot for uh, people to be stationed, right? I mean, Fort Fort Jackson, relax, <laughs> Jackson. <laughs> so you're um, are you a, a fan of the Panthers then? Yes, I Football? am a Carolina Panthers fan. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> uh oh. Are y'all? Yeah. Well, y'all are Minnesota fans, right? Uh, yes. yeah. Hardcore Vikings fans. Yeah. Like that was kind of ridiculously. Cool. Our least favorite team is the Carolina Panthers. Oh no! It's, no, it's, 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 the, it's the Packers. Oh, it's got to be the Packers. Yeah, it's definitely okay. the Packers. Yeah, but I had Aaron Rodgers on my fantasy team, so it's not that bad. You any <laughs> any chance you get to bring that up? Yeah. You do don't you? Yeah. Because I picked him. <laughs> She'll bring that up. In and the- I was the eighth round, and I still picked him. 
you're shoving Thank that you. up in like completely random conversations. You'll be talking about what do you want to eat tonight? I don't know. What would Aaron Rodgers want to eat? He was on my fantasy <laughs> football team last year. Uh, he would have been down for some chicken, I bet, in week eight. So that's what I'm going to make tonight. Just mm-hmm. she'll just fit it in there any way she can. Yeah. Oh, because oh, he got injured, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, he got injured, and guess what? I still won eight. that game that week with point one seven points for my quarterback. She also brings <laughs> that up as often as possible. Well, no one else has done it, so we, I feel like I deserve yes, it. Yes, we get it. We already gave you your medal for it. No, I don't have a medal, actually. <laughs> I should have one. <laughs> So whatever, you, dropped Gre- like, whatever dropped Greg Whatever dropped Greg Olson and then he came back and got like seventy five million points two weeks later. She's done so many other great things in life, but for some reason she's chosen that game that she won with Aaron Rodgers when he got injured as her crowning achievement in life. Well, I he got injured <laughs> like two minutes into the game and I was like, I'm gonna lose and if I win, it's gonna be a pretty fucking sweet ass deal if I win. That's pretty incredible. Do they get a lot of? Uh, I guess the running back got a lot of, got a lot of plays in that. Yeah, it wasn't. It was that. Like my defense did really good. I had up some other players that oh, did really good, geez. so I didn't really need a quarterback. Do you need another drink? Do you need a cocktail there, frenzy? Sure. Yeah. Okay. And then, then, so this is the funny part: is he gets to give me shit about that, and then this year he's like, well, "For the draft this year, I'm probably going to try and pick up Rogers." Um. No, you're not. Like, you just made fun of me for picking him second round. Is uh, have they already come out with the um, like who's the number one uh, fantasy draft? No. Do you play fantasy football? I played it one one year, and oh, oh you is, need to it play is, it again. It's very time consuming. You have to put a lot of time it into it. It is time consuming. I understand that. Like I totally get that. It's it's weird. It's almost weird for me in a way because during football season, it's it's um it's very time consuming just paying attention to the team that you're a fan of. But then once you start playing fantasy, it's kind of you start paying attention to every single game that's playing and if you can't get it on your TV or cable or watch it on your phone, you're like, "Dang it!" cuz you may have one player or the, the team that you're playing against has a player or something on it. But I think it's cool that you get to know all these different players and teams and you wouldn't normally, you know, pay attention to or care about if you weren't playing fantasy. I feel like the real, the, the skill comes in after the draft. Cause I feel like the draft itself is, uh, you know, you don't oh, yeah. know how people. Oh yeah. The, the draft is kind of, it's a crapshoot. Yeah. It's just a fun, you know, you get together, have drinks at a bar and you, like buy out like the the back of the bar or something, have a little party. Yeah, so that's that's, that's you, Hollywood, not us. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the 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 draft is whatever. But then the actual week to week thing, where the you can open up on Tuesday morning, eight o'clock. You can trade players and pick up players. It's like our league. Like at eight o'clock, everyone's on their phone. Like, oh my gosh, it's eight. I'm going to pick up and drop whoever, or you even drop players first and you get your list of who you want to pick up because it's whoever does it the fastest. It's not based on rank or record. It's whoever does it the fastest. Are you feeling the itch a little bit? I miss it. I love uh, it. It's June and she's like at the shapes for fantasy football. (laughs) Three, what, three months away? Uh, The draft is usually right after Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Hey, so you live in Georgia right now, right? Uh-huh. How cool is it that you get to be part of a very, very popular uh, you know, Netflix show, but you don't have to be in Hollywood? <laughs> is that not um, the greatest thing ever? It's pretty cool. I mean, I, don't get me wrong. I would love to – I definitely want to branch out and, um, you know, get in, you know, different uh, markets, uh, which – I'm working at, uh, but yeah, a lot of stuff shoots here, so you know, yeah, the Walking Dead definitely helps. Oh yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to get on that show. I'm working on it. Nice. I love that show. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm trying. Just do all the <sighs> just do all the shows that are shot in Georgia. Just don't go to Hollywood. Avoid it at all <laughs> costs. You'll be that one dude who who was able to avoid Hollywood, but was in Hollywood. You know what I mean? 
Yeah, but a lot of the big roles are cast yeah. out of L.A. No. and New York. No. At some yeah, point, but at some point, no. Ozark is going to go for about twelve seasons. <laughs> Jason Bateman's character is going to get killed off in like season four. You're going to become <laughs> the main dude. You're going to have to like take over the money laundering business or whatever. It's going to be called Better Call Sam, right? Yeah, <laughs> Better Call yes. Sam. There's going to be there's going to be a spin. Or you should have called Sam. That would be so called. cool. Man. There's going to be a spin-off episode. Yeah. <laughs> there you go, Sam. And but I think there's something to say about shows like that that are filmed not in L.A. Like, I mean, I, I've religiously walked, watched Walking Dead. Like, I don't watch it every week when it's on TV or on... on watch it on Netflix. Yeah, like you binge watch like a season. Yeah. But there were episodes the, way, the, the past like two it. like last season and the season before that I legitimately was like crying like I'm, I've been so invested in those characters and it's just such it a well done show yeah you cried oh yeah no I I do the same I do the same like I here's my theory like if you watch a show um, and like you said like you binge it and you're invested in those characters and you yeah. don't have any in between uh, yeah it's like losing a like a family member it's weird Right, but and when you, the show's over too, you're like, I don't know what to do now. I guess I have to pick a different one. But it, but for me, I'd rather watch all of them all in a row, for, and or at least like commit to watching a couple a week versus just watching it once every week when they come out. I'd rather just wait and do them all together. Oh yeah, I, I was like, late in to walking. I was late into it because I had an audition. I want to say it was the season before last. I had a big audition. I was like, all right, well, everybody likes this show, and I haven't watched it yet. I'll give it a go. So yeah. I've been like all the way up until you know you see Negan for the first time because that was Oof. what was on Netflix. Wow. So that's a lot of that's, that's a, a lot, lot of emotion. Holy cow! And the scene, like I think one of the most emotional scenes for me uh, was the scene. I can't remember the character, but it was the one who died um, at that hospital. Remember the hospital oh, where yeah. there's Beth. Girl? the girl yeah where he brings her out and he's holding her yeah beth and daryl's carrying beth yeah yeah that was sad because i know see the scene that the the darkest (sighs) scene was the one uh from like you know the most negan the the, the most recent season i believe where where negan the end of the season the previous season where that negan guy there all the the characters were in a circle around that fire and he he you know, bashed in like three of them. Abraham, right? was that, wait, was that um? That was a season before last. Yeah, right. It was like yeah. We we are not caught up in the current season. We okay. Like, but but so. but they are, do but... it. But they but Walking but... Dead does it the right way. They they release they they have all the seasons play or, or all the show play. You know, all the episodes play for a season, and then they wait super long to release all of them together. And then it's right before, like a month before the next season comes out. So oh, okay. you have it's so usually all- like a year in between, almost like nine to nine nine months to a year in between seasons. So so all of season eight. So season eight's on Netflix now. Then I can't remember. What's the last That's- season that you watched? Uh, season eight. Season eight was season nine's coming up in October. Okay, so season eight probably won't be out until September. Okay. That's how you they watch, do it. You watch Fear the Walking Dead? I, no, I, I have the, a few episodes. I, I watched like yeah, maybe in the, the beginning, maybe the first. I thought episode. that was. I think it's really good. I think it's. Uh, I'm all caught up. I'm, I mean, they just had the uh, the the mid season finale, but how many seasons are there really of that? Good. I remember They're on when, season four. Four. Okay, I remember when they first started doing it. Crazy. Yeah, it's really cool. See, like. It's it ha- it's before The Walking Dead happens, and you know, right? They try they have to catch up with the timeline and everything, so that's kind of cool. That's but cool. you know, at the very beginning, you see it like happening on the West Coast, like at the very beginning. Yeah. What got you into acting, Kevin? Like, what what got it all started for you? Origin story time. Origin story. Let's do this. Um, dun, dun, dun. We need music. Well, I went. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like uh, I feel like Logan origin <laughs> um, so I went to Clemson I graduated from Clemson um, so I'm a big Clemson Tiger fan and uh, I went in as a computer science major and realized that I knew nothing about computer science <laughs> you just had to pick something right 
I, just, I like video games in high school, so I was like, man, maybe I can make video games. Yeah, yeah it's not that simple. <laughs> um, and uh, so I switched my major to English, uh, decided to, to audition for a play, you know, try something new, kind of break out of my shell. Thespian. And uh, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't get the part in the play, um, but I really enjoyed the process and loved working in, you know, doing the audition process. And I was like, man, I want to be a part of the uh, part of the show. So I did, uh, I did like some backstage, you know, did some tech work, um, which is a show in itself. Like I didn't realize like all this, like the tech crew themselves when they come on stage and they switch out stuff. It, a lot goes into that. Um, it's like a performance in itself. Yeah, yeah it's that's crazy. Dinner. So go back. Uh, you you enjoyed yeah. the audition process, like the standing in front of a bunch of people and being like, "Hi," and acting well, or mean, doing whatever, like public speaking. Like that gives me the willies. But I appreciate people that. But it's only audition process is in front of what, like three people. It doesn't matter. I I don't feel comfortable doing that at all. But I give props <laughs> to people that do. Sometimes they do it differently. Uh, this audition, like it was, it was in um, like a black box theater, so there wasn't like a green room where people waited to go in to audition for the play. Okay. Uh, um, you just like hid behind yeah. a curtain, and then it was your turn to come out. <laughs> yeah, and then people just ended up lining up on the on the uh, on the benches. So if you were like one of the last people to audition, which I was. You had most people already in there, and they were oh, yeah. they were just watching your audition. That's but that's crazy. I could not do that. I, would. I was uh, I don't know. I mean, I'm I'm kind of um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Give uh, no fucks. Well, yeah, kind of person. I'm, I'm drawing a blank on it. Um, uh, jeez, I can't believe I can't think of this word. Asian. Pa- it's like passionate, but it's uh, oh, freaking a. Uh, um, Danish. Danish. No, <laughs> like you, you know what you want to do. Yeah, competitive. competitive is good. That's the word I was looking for. Good lord. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I was, I was passionate. I was competitive. I wanted to, to make it happen. I'm driven. So I was like, man, I, I still want to do this because I really liked, like, the audition. So I decided to, you know, take some acting classes. Wow. What did you and audition got... for? Do you remember? Uh, the play was called The Heidi Chronicles. Who's Heidi? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was a play back in the 80s. Um, it was about... Uh, a lot of I... it had to do with uh, um, women's rights, sexual uh, revolution. It was Heidi um, Fleiss. It's a play off Heidi Fleiss, <laughs> probably. probably. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, was, it was a fictional... Uh, play um but yeah it was um yeah, it was a good process i got to see the play behind the you know behind uh, backstage made a lot of friends on the show made one of my best friends uh he played the main guy in the show um he's an actor st- still doing it he's making his dreams come true he, li- he lives in new york what's his uh, name give a shout out grayson powell Oh, Grayson. <laughs> hang on all the time. He's wacky. He's an, he's an awesome guy. Um, what was that? But yeah, so I did... Uh, yeah, so the next play came along. It was like a musical called Burial at Thebes. Burial and, at uh, Thebes, okay. Yeah, it was based, it was, uh, it was based on the, the Greek play Antigone. And it was a musical for the year. Um, and... I got the one part that wasn't like a uh, a musical part. Like I didn't have to sing because I was like, "Man, I can't sing." Which <laughs> is another. A, I was just gonna say, "Do you have a good voice?" <laughs> I, I, I was gonna get to that. Uh, so, so we do that play, and then the next year, the big musical is called "You're in Town." It's exactly what it sounds <laughs> like. So it's, it's, it's kind of a parody of uh, Les Mis. Uh-huh. Uh, but everything's covered in piss. No, it's uh, you have to pay to pee. You can't just pee. <laughs> it costs money to pee. It's a funny play. I definitely recommended it if uh, if you ever get a chance to see it. Okay. Um, but uh, so that was the big 
play at the end of the year, and I was like, well, I can't sing. Crap. Um, so I went and uh, uh, checked out the the soundtrack to it just to, you know, listen to it and see if I could, you know, hit any of the notes. And, and I started singing one of the songs, and I was like, oh, wow, that's not bad. That's actually pretty good. Uh, so I didn't realize I could sing until college, um, which I guess... I should have known because my mom sang when she was a kid. She was a country singer, so I got a little, a little twang uh, to my singing. Funny story. Yeah, at the rap party uh, this season, we had karaoke, and uh, yes. nobody had heard me sing. Right. Um, so I got up there and I sang, uh, sang Garth Brooks' uh, "Friends in Low Places." That's my. Oh that's my yeah. That's have you ever good. seen Garth in concert? No, I would love to. Oh. Um, he was in Atlanta. He was in Atlanta. What, like uh, I think late last year. Well, I saw him in concert. Oh, probably five years ago in downtown Minneapolis, and he did. He did probably eight shows in three days, maybe four days. But he did probably two a day. And I saw the last show that he did, and it was a ten oh. like a ten o'clock show. Oh, nice. And it went until 2.30 in the morning, and his voice was hoarse, and his wife was there, and it was amazing. It was so good. Hey, okay. Sarge doesn't care, because he wasn't there with me, so he's playing over my talking. This is uh, Friends in Low Places. The instrumental. Oh, yeah. yeah, the instrumental sucks. It's the karaoke. <laughs> so I was, uh, but I was, I was singing that at the rap yeah, and, uh, that's a perfect song. It's a badass people, song. Garth has people, so many good ones. But people didn't know I could sing. They were like, they were all like really surprised. Like uh, Julia, who plays Ruth in the show. Yeah. Um, I will say this doesn't give anything away. I get to work with Ruth a lot in season two. I, I'll nice. give you that. Um, Are you going to be part of a strip club? Part of the strip club ownership? Can't I can't say. You. I know. <laughs> I'm just guessing. Yeah, Jason Bateman dies in a couple. No, seasons. he doesn't die. They're like, they're like, no, the 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 executives at Netflix, they they sat down with Kevin allegedly, and they said, all right, hey, Kevin, all right, you just need to you need to be patient for like two more seasons. We're gonna kill off <laughs> Jason Bateman because he's got he's gonna have like he's got a lot of stuff going. He's, on. Got, yeah. he's got like thirty other movies and shit he's got to <laughs> do. He's got like four other Netflix shows that we have slotted for him. You're gonna be our leading man in like two seasons you just gotta be patient just play ball and in two years the show is yours so he'll be running the strip club and you know he's gonna have like ten other businesses all kinds of crazy shit's gonna happen Sam's gonna be a country singer (laughs) (laughs) Um, but it was funny because so people on set didn't know (laughs) that I that I could sing you know well I mean relatively well I'm not I'm no expert but you know I, I think it's pretty good and they thought it was good, and uh, I was in the makeup uh, chair, like the next, like I think a couple days later or something, because we had the wrap party before we actually finished. But uh, um, or it was a mid-season wrap party that they had karaoke. That's what it was. Well, mid-season and, uh, wrap party <laughs> sounds like an excuse to just have a party. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, um, but I was in the makeup room, and uh, they were like, "Man, we didn't know you could sing because." Uh, uh, like, um, one of the big, big guys on the show was like, "Man, I didn't know Kevin could sing. Man, we should throw that into the show sometime." Oh shit! <laughs> so, oh, shit. so who knows? Maybe down the line you'll get to see Sam uh, do a little karaoke or something. Who knows? I hope so. That'd Season cool. two, Sam sings. <laughs> <laughs> he goes for his dreams. He, he moves to Nashville. He makes it. <laughs> Fuck this real estate thing. <laughs> well, I'm going, I'm going there, country. there is the whole story about. Uh, so, there's people that you know. You know, there's people that are fan of fans of having watches, like wristband watches. Like it's like they're no, kind of yeah. There's right. people that like like they think having a fancy wristwatch or a watch is means something. Um, Elvis Presley had a diamond encrusted Omega watch, and it's going to be auctioned off soon. Well, like that's Elvis's watch. Elvis's, yeah. Who would want diamond? That? Diamond, diamond encrusted Omega watch. Just a douche watch. 
a just total douche watch. But it's not a douche watch. It's it not like is, a P. Diddy you, watch. It's got like a normal. Oh, no, it's that got actually, a, no, you're right. That the face of it look. has diamonds around it, but the the actual band part is just like normal material. It's not it like a P. Diddy crazy. Tupac fucking no, 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 diamond no. encrusted watch. I agree. It doesn't look crazy. But the fact that there's still like 200 diamonds, in, you know, encrusting around the face of that watch. That's it's 44 diamonds. And how much is it worth? Um, a lot. Yeah, that's a little douchey. Can you see yourself doing that? If you were like Elvis status, would you feel a little gross having a watch just dripping in diamonds? Like, why do you need that? You spend that on so many other things. Well, no, so, that aren't but, so douchey. But there's here's the whole story. So there's an uh, an, an engraving on the back, and it says to Elvis, seventy five million records from VC from RCA, like when he spoke like sold all those records and then he wore it and was for like photographed wearing it and then he was wearing the watch one day at a las vegas casino at a table like gambling and another man sat next to him and the man complimented his his diamond studded wrist piece and elvis returned to the compliment remarking on the man's watch a hamilton with diamonds of its own which a hamilton i don't know what that is i believe it's another kind of watch but then they uh they traded watches what yep and then decades after that, um, that person is selling the watch, and it's going to get between fifty-two so thousand uh, and one hundred six thousand dollars. So, so like it wasn't dude, like they were selling Elvis's watch. It was a guy that traded with him, and now he's trying to make money off of it because his gambling addiction has gotten the best <laughs> of him, and now he has to sell off one of the most badass pieces of memorabilia. One dude could have he got it for free i'm sure that yeah. watch he gave Elvis was, was a piece of shit i'm sure it wasn't even it was worth 30 bucks probably from a vending machine <laughs> um do you pay attention to horse racing at all um i do like, know that um, stuff? that he uh that the what was the horse's name this, that that did the triple i know somebody got the triple crown again i heard that is it justified was that the horse? yeah justify Super Which, horse. I mean, it's crazy how long the, the spurts go without any horse winning the Triple Crown. Or even the ones like Big Brown. I remember when Big Brown, Big Brown was in contention for winning the Triple Crown and then broke his fucking leg on TV and super sad. And they ended up like bringing him to like a foster farm for horses. <laughs> Did they used to just shoot him right there on the racetrack in front of everybody? They yeah, they still do. They'll euthanize <laughs> them. Yeah. Not well, they put him in like a little just... horse. No! Ar- they put him in a horse RV and do that. I've been to horse races before in Minnesota where they like break their leg and they. You know, a horse break his leg. I've seen a horse like oh, like terrible. barrel like somersault. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, that'd be sick. And I was crying. I by know. the way, of course. Doesn't it, so a horse's leg like if they break their leg they can't. No, like, you know, they're like, lame. Don't... Like they're done. Yeah, but there's no, there's no reason to kill them. That's what's fucked up. Is they that, don't. They're not going to be. Happen? They're not going to be ever happy again. A horse is not going to sit in like a pasture and just not be able to run or move. Like they're lame. Like they can't. I'm pretty sure that they still want to live. N- no, Are I don't sure? think they, they do. They might be. Maybe they're sad because yeah, now I got a limp, but I'm also still yeah. in this pasture. <laughs> like I still want to live. Don't just kill me. That's fucked up. Do you can you imagine if we did that to people? Oh, I sprained my ankle. Oh, got to shoot the dude in the head. He sprained his ankle. He's gonna have a limp. That's the he, handmaid's tale. He's gonna have a limp when it rains from now on. We better kill him. They can just you imagine. That's fucked up. You don't gotta kill a horse. But they're because we can't race anymore. But they're it's not because they not even horses that that race any horse that becomes lame like they it's like they can't walk normally and they can't function normally. It affects their whole like, like their. It's called their locomotor system. It's like their system of functioning. Like they can't. So it never it never fixes back. Like like you know if you put a cast on it. No, it doesn't. No, they're they're they have such weird bones in their feet and their hooves and stuff, and it's mm-hmm. usually it's usually caused by trauma. Sometimes it's like congenital stuff where it's like hereditary and passed down. With like if you look at like different breeds of dogs, mostly cats kind of not really because you can put together like we have a stupid like half siamese half uh what's the other tabby 
He's got the M on his face. Irish. But he looks like a ta- like a Siamese in a way. But he's s- super stupid. But like he doesn't. He's not going to have any congenital problem, like health problems. Like okay, you can but, breed cats over and over all day. So, but if a horse breaks its leg at some point, and and it doesn't, it, it doesn't get to heal back hundred percent the way it was, and he has some kind of weird limp or something like that, is he? Are they? Do they get like super depressed and they just don't want to live anymore? Or why do they have to kill him? Like, why can't they just live life with a weird limp? Um. Seriously, like, if that, I was a horse, that would be like you can't. Oh, I broke you my you leg. can't okay. with horses. You can't really when when they get lame like that. It's it's not so much lame like they've got. Um, I don't know. They're they're in pain basically. So you can't with horses like you can't fix the pain. Did all of them like anything? It's because of pain every time. Not just because, it's like, it's oh, usually it's either because of an injury that causes pain or it's because of something hereditary. Like, but you have to figure like if you have a horse that's in pain or something's wrong, you have to figure out like what is wrong with them first, and that costs seems, money, which most people don't want to spend unless they're like race horses. True. But it's usually, and then it also when they have that pain, it it not only goes like they're super sensitive animals, so it goes to like their like their emotional thinking too. Where they're like, oh, I'm super sad, and I feel my leg Eeyore. hurts. Like they're oh, not sorry, like sorry, a turn yeah, like they're yeah. not like a normal like a crazy mountain lion that's like, oh, I got shot in the leg. Whatever, I'm gonna go fuck up some mountain bikers and rip their faces off. Like what horses. Is will... What does it matter anyway? <laughs> We're all gonna die someday anyway. Yeah, but they're just different. I don't know. Huh. <laughs> and they have a lot. I mean, if you look at a horse, like they weigh a lot. And if you've got one leg that's hurting, like that's going to affect like your whole. This is weird. Horses, they're, they're these big, massive, muscular, majestic creatures, and they got these little skinny, yeah. bitch ass legs that seem so brittle. They just look brittle. <laughs> they should, yeah, they should be bigger. That's true. They should be like massive. Yeah. Yeah. I. I mean, I agree with you. Like, if you've you you bred you breed like a a, a horse to be a you know racer that gets you that $103,000 purse every time and hopefully yeah. gets you to the triple crown and you spend all this money on hiring a horse masseuse and uh, a and barn to upkeep his, it and whatever. sell his jizz for even more money? <laughs> well, yeah, they do. I've seen horses like mount up on like a fake oh, chick that's, at that's the University the real... of Minnesota when I was going to vet tech school and they, they get on that stuff. Horse barn? How did it make you feel when you watched that? Um, super. I like felt like I should look away. Did like, it? Did it? Did it did you kind of like it? Did it no, I it? I wanted him to like be happy, but I was like, I don't need to be a part of this. Like, good for you, buddy. Wait, I think that's where the real money is when you have like a champion kind of racehorse like that. Is is the breeding is where I think the real money is made. Not just in the yeah, like, but I you can you, you can breed and mix the semen and all that stuff, but it, it comes down to trainability. Like if if a that's... horse is trainable. That yeah, champion racehorse. That jizz is like gold. That's, of course, that's but gold it, but if if he's gonna be a total stallion and a total dick, and you can't train him at all, like what's the point? Like you don't want to waste a drop of that jizz. That owner of that horse is like, oh, that's all he thinks about is that horse's jizz every night. And yeah, but if that it. horse is not trainable, you it's might as well drink. go back to the Godfather and have a horse head in your bed. Like there's no point in it. It's just assume. If it's a good racehorse, it's yeah, you shouldn't assume though. That, that like trainability. So is just because he has awesome sperm, he's trainable. I highly doubt that. He runs fast. Yeah, he's no. a mutter. He runs fast <laughs> he like one out of twelve times. His mutter was a mutter. Yeah, that's that is not the way to think about it. Sorry. <laughs> What's that from? That's uh. From Seinfeld. <laughs> Seinfeld, yes. His mother was a mother. <laughs> His mother was a mother. He loves the slap. These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> no, Why no, don't you tell me the name of the movie you'd like to see? <laughs> God, that's a great show. <laughs> I love that episode with the 1-800 movie yeah, whatever the, the thing. Movie phone. Oh, yeah. Hello, welcome to movie phone. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to movie phone. Type in the zip code of the movie, whatever, and then he just keeps doing it. And he's like, "Why don't you tell me the name of the movie you'd like to see?" And he's like, "God." I think it's your turn for cocktails, hmm. frenzy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, 
Um, I'm curious, what was your very first professional acting gig? Like the very first gig you got that you got paid for? Um, well, One Tree Hill was my first, oh, uh, first TV show, but I think um, my first acting gig was, uh, was a North Carolina education lottery commercial, and I, got, uh, I played a Powerball. And they were, yeah. and, the, and the whole idea was the Powerballs, but I was a cube, right? And I was auditioning <laughs> to be a Powerball, and it was like a, it was a parody of like American Idol. Okay. So I get, I get in there, and, <laughs> and the whole bit is like I walk in and they're like, you're a cube. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just not going to work for me. I'm sorry. And, but it was funny because that was my first audition yeah. with that with my agent and uh so it was it was like meta acting i guess because it was my first audition right mm-hmm. so i go in there and i'm happy that i get it that i'm getting an audition for something so i go in happy go lucky uh and that's and that was the character that you know they liked they were like man we just loved your naivete you know didn't care that you were a cube going in for a power ball you just you were just loving life and i was like yeah, because I got an agent finally, and I got you know I'm getting auditions, so I was just excited, and that was, and I booked my first thing that I ever auditioned for, which was pretty cool. Nice. <laughs> so you got to be a power cube. A power cube, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, though. And then so so then from that where did that go? Like obviously you had a little, you had some confidence built up. Now you're like fuck yeah, I, I'm in something, something I actually got paid for. I'm officially a professional. Oh yeah. Um, then I did some industrials. You know, uh, I want to say I did a Burger King commercial, which was my first SAG, and might be only <laughs> SAG commercial. Uh, and it was one of those commercials where it was uh, uh, Tony Stewart was pretend he was he was working at the Burger King, so it was like it was like during you know business hours and everything, and people were coming in and and people were supposed to be surprised. Oh, hey, what is Tony Stewart doing here, uh, taking orders? And I played one of the employees in the back because they mixed employees who actually worked there with people who auditioned for the part. Okay. Uh, so that was the that was the next big thing, I would say. I got some nice residuals on that. Um, Mailbox yeah. money. Yes, yes. Residuals are always good, especially yeah. the first couple. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny sometimes you see uh, um, the residual checks that, that some people get from something they did a long time ago. You know, they, they'll, they'll have a check come in that's like a dollar thirty-seven. You know, so oh, I got like... one for five. I got one for six cents a couple <laughs> days ago. Yeah, I, and I was like, this is like the smallest one I've ever because I've gotten them for like five dollars, four dollars, a dollar yeah. something. But this was the lowest I'd ever gotten. It was like that episode of Seinfeld where he he gets all those residual checks from uh, from Japanese. Yeah. Places. <laughs> fun house or whatever and he was getting residual checks for like well, it's, five it's cents hilarious. or 25 cents or something it's it was literally that kind of stuff <laughs> a six a six cent check it literally yeah. costs more to send that check right yeah the value of the check so so what do you do do you just keep those in a in a box somewhere or do you actually go to the bank have you and cash a six cent check i don't <laughs> i know because if i put that in like the atm machine I'd have to put like point <laughs> oh six. Yeah, I don't is, even that, think it has is that, that even function. an option? I don't even know. I doubt it. <laughs> so it's just for shits and giggles. You it's gotta like go, you sitting gotta go on the ca- uh, the kitchen table. You gotta cash that the- check, man. Do what? You gotta go cash that check. <laughs> That's six cents. Yeah, just for a joke, I would probably go into the into the Bank of America and just see what they say. What you do, you, you can make an Instagram story out of it. Everyone, lo- you can. You oh can yeah, yeah. That'd go be to fun. the bank, cash the six cents residual check, and then take that six cents, that nickel. No, actually, what you do, you tell them you want it all in pennies, 
so they'll give you six pennies. <laughs> you take that back to your place, you spread it over your bed, and then you just do like one of those things where you're like you're making it rain. You're throwing pennies up in the air <laughs> and rolling around <laughs> in your money, and then you go and buy yourself something nice with that six cents. Oh, that's funny. You know, maybe like a piece of taffy. I don't know. Can you get anything for six cents these days? I think so. <laughs> There's got to be something. That's your, maybe, that's uh, your challenge. Even, no, stamps are 25 cents. Right? I know. I that's that's why it costs more to send you that damn check than, it, than the value. Sure it did, to make the check. and uh, So yeah. that, that would be another challenge. Find something that you can actually <laughs> buy with that six cents residual check. I I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to, you. to ride my bike to the like convenience store, and they had bubble gum that had like fortunes in it, and it was one. It was in this little like goldfish kind of jar, and it was one cent a piece of gum. Really? See? And I'd have a quarter, and I'd be like, I'm literally gonna look at you, and I'm gonna pick out twenty five pieces of gum to the like <laughs> wow. shop owner, and they'd be like, yeah. Oh my god! Like this chick is back again. <laughs> like go away the gum junkie that lives like, around the I remember park. I used to get maybe three bucks a week for an allowance and I'd always go buy gum and pop you know how much fucking gum you could buy with that three dollars I know I used to and they that's why they used to hate me you must have been the <laughs> gum czar of the neighborhood and then I brought my friends and I was like hey we can go buy this gum it's only a penny a piece wow she's flipping it for, for two pennies mm-hmm. two cents yeah that's <laughs> crazy Running that gum game. The gum the game. Well, and the funniest thing was, is I uh, was driving today from downtown Minneapolis, where in Minnesota, there is two seasons, winter and construction. And this year what up? is literally the worst year of construction I've ever experienced in my that. life. You say no, that every year. I do not. This is the worst. She said that last year. No, nope, I did not, because I didn't have to drive downtown <laughs> last year. Is it ever? Is it ever sunny in Minnesota? I just, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I don't picture it ever. Yeah, being no, we don't ever see the sun. Sunny. Like I'm an albino. Today. You're just so stated. <laughs> it was, it was like 80 degrees today. This weekend is supposed to be like in the 90s. Next week it's going to be like 100. Oh. Yeah, we wow. see the, we see the sun. I can't picture that. Holy cow! Okay. You bet. I guess I'm just thinking during. Do you like, think there's like icebergs there. everywhere? <laughs> oh, I live in an iceberg. <laughs> we're constantly fighting off saber tooth tigers and shit. Yeah, <laughs> we just wear furry outfits all the time. <laughs> well, I guess people could see that, but no, like we we've had sun probably like warmth since. I mean, Memorial Weekend it was hot as shit here. It was almost a hundred degrees. Oh wow! Uh huh. That is pretty hot. I'd, yeah, I don't tan very well. I would probably just burn and then. <laughs> yeah, if you if when you come up here to visit someday, you should. We'll have to just like make sure you have like sixteen bottles of sunscreen because it oh, gets yeah, it fun. gets hot. Hang out. If I ever if I ever leave Atlanta, at least for a hot second. Yeah, that'd be fun. That would be fun. We Cocktail have you ever uh, experienced uh, a juicy Lucy before? Do you know what this is? Oh. oh. I've, I've heard that on the Food Network. It's a burger, right? Yes. It's, it's a burger. The burger. Yeah, it's cheese stuffed yeah. inside a burger. And there's two places in, in the Twin Cities, Minneapolis, St. Paul area that have the, this Juicy Lucy, as you would call it. And both of them credit themselves for being the originator of it. So it's kind uh, yeah. of like this competition. That's probably what you saw on the Food Network, that show. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um. But it's they're amazing. Both places are great, and they're literally probably two miles away from each other on the same road, <laughs> which makes it even better. So you could you if you have a big enough stomach and a big enough appetite, you could go from one and then try that one, and then go to the next one in the same day or in the same hour and try both of them and rate them if you wanted to. Yeah, definitely. Uh... If I came to Minnesota, I would definitely want to try one of those because I know that's yeah, that's part of part of the yeah. deal. Um, so you you've always been a kind of southern East Coaster, huh? As yeah. far as where you've lived, okay. So, what are some of the? I guess if someone were to come visit you in your area, what would you? What would be like the top two or three things that you'd be like? You have to eat this. This is amazing. This is like my go-to. 
Like my oh, wow. my thing is the juicy Lucy, but what's yours? Put me on the spot. I gotta think about that for a second. Um, well, Atlanta is. I don't know, Atlanta. There's just so much here. I mean, it's not New York or anything, but it's it's hot, Atlanta. Yeah, I'm trying to think what's um like that I like that I've been to. <sighs> You're in charge. Of, um, I I did. A, I had a layover one time when I first got out of the military in Atlanta and me and my buddy ended up going to this place called I think it was called like the underground are you familiar okay. with this area it, it's is, it a bar? is that a bar it's 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 in like a, it's underneath the streets like you go down these stairs like in a subway system and and there's all these there's a whole bunch of different bars and nightclubs and stuff but it's all underground it sounds really familiar hmm that but sounds I, I just don't get out enough, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> is it is is barbecue becoming more of a thing in Atlanta? I know, like the whole wood fire pizza oven has been a thing over the yeah. past few yeah, years, but the pizzas are big. Yeah. Um, yeah. Barbecue. Not so much. I don't know. I I mean, totally a southern thing. Pretty much anywhere down south. Barbecue. Yeah, but it, I don't know. I feel like the the wood. Maybe it's I don't know the wood fire pizza oven thing is taken off, especially with in warmer climates where you can actually have them outside and you don't have to worry about I would say, climate. Uh, I would say a staple of Atlanta that everybody says you should go to is a uh, Varsity. If you've heard of that place, Varsity. Varsity, yeah, it's uh, hot dogs and uh, burgers. Uh, mm. But Do they have cheese it's, curds. It's downtown, it's big. Um, and the whole idea is like you got to know your order when you come to the, like when you get to the counter, or they're gonna be like, all right, well you're not ready. Peace kind out. It's yeah, kind of yeah, like it's a, your shit, boy. Better have your order ready. Oh, I mem- I I remember. Um, I used to, I worked at a place once where we didn't have computers like that. It was old school, and so you'd have to go up to the bartenders and call your drinks. And if you didn't say them on the right order, or have the prices right, they'd be like, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> kind of the same thing, Next. and if and if you made it a week, like they were like, please stay and work for us. Like <laughs> people are so stupid, like they can't figure it out. Turnover is insane here. Oh yeah, it was crazy. And that was in California, and then I was like, I'm quitting after like six months. They're like, please don't. And I was like, yeah, no. So how long? Uh, how much time is it taking up when you guys are filming for for you? Yourself? Um. Well, I know we started in November of last year for season two, and we ended in early May. For me, oh, wow. you know, it's off and on. That's quick, though. That's a lot of time. Yeah, but kind of quick, too. We had to start a little late because uh, Jason was doing Arrested Development, yeah. um, which is why the show's coming out a little later, too, I think. Yeah, that crazy fucker. He's like, yeah, I'm going to do some <laughs> Netflix shows. Fuck it. <laughs> I remember when I had a huge crush on him when he was on a Hogan's Heroes back he in the day. He was also on Little House on the Prairie he back looked, in the day. Really? Oh, yeah. He, he looked, I, I bet you he looks exactly the same as he did in Hogan's Heroes as he does now. Oh, he, <laughs> he was he so cute. Age. And then I remember <laughs> oh, his sister was on cool. Family Ties. She was Alex B. Keaton's girlfriend. Yeah. Or no, was she the sister? Which she's was she? The sister. The sister. Oh, that's creepy. Sorry, I said girlfriend. But, but yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a uh, he's an interesting dude. Very um, de- he he can he can play. He, he's in a lot of movies where he has like I guess you would call it a comedic role. He has this dry sense of humor, dry you know wit about him. So he he can he can totally pull off these comedic roles, but he also can pull off a show like Ozark, where it's all yeah, dark, he, dark and so. Yeah, he said uh, he doesn't like playing, you know. Sh- the comedy, the comedic role, and he doesn't like playing the dramatic role. He likes that everyman kind of role. Oh yeah, which is kind of what he, uh, what he's known for. And he's every awesome. role, like yeah, that, yeah. You know, you, Somehow like, uh, he makes that everyman role fit, whether it's a comedy or a dark type setup like Ozark. Yeah, well, he can make it fit no matter what. He's just he's always like the voice of reason, level headed type character. Yeah, and That's especially awesome. with Ozark too, like knows what he's talking about. Like he's like, "Oh, you're gonna throw some weird shit at me. That's gonna affect my family and like fuck shit up." Well, here I got a great answer for you, even though I just pulled it out of the top of my head. Yeah. yeah. 
which I think is awesome. And he's so always so like calm as a cucumber. Oh yeah, he's got a very uh, yeah. He's definitely got a style, and in real life, he's just the nicest guy. Like super sure. super sweet dude. Well, and I think too, like the visual stuff with Ozark is one of the things that got me too. Is just the like the nature aspect and just how it's like filmed in general, like the things that you see. I don't know, like when they're when they're in the minivan and they're like, "Okay, we're driving," and they pull off on the side of the road. And he's like, "I gotta take a piss," and he like goes out into the woods, like oh, probably sure, further than he needs to, but he like leans yeah. up against that tree and he's like, "What the fuck am I doing?" And he gets to see his penis that quickly. No. <laughs> But no. then after that, like, they, they pull off and then it's like the whole family comes out of the, the car and, like, they see, like, okay, like, we can do this. Like, this place is beautiful. Like, Yeah, the end of uh, episode one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a great setup to, yeah. the, to the show. So, so did they, that, that scene itself must have been filmed. Was that filmed in the Ozarks? That was Lake Altoona in Georgia. Really? Mm-hmm. So just like... I, don't, I don't know about that scene. Oh, maybe think... not that scene, but the rest of the show is. Yeah, because that scene was so, so it had to be so, so specific. Yeah, I'm, ass- see, I'm assuming I, I that footage must have been the Ozarks because people from the Ozarks would be like, "Come on, man, we know this not the Ozarks. This is fucking Lake Altoona." I could know? be wrong, but I, I'm pretty sure that's that was shot in the Ozarks. Yeah, I'll find imagine. out for you. But yeah, I mean that's it's pretty cool to have that. And you've got it, uh, friends. You mentioned earlier you've got another a movie that's coming out here soon. What was it called? Uh, American Animals. American Animals. Um, yeah. What's that about? He's a man. What are you doing? It. I play. Uh, my character is Scruffy Counterfeiter. Beautiful. So he doesn't, he doesn't have a name, uh, but it's a really cool scene uh, with Evan Peters from uh, American Horror okay. Story fame. Yep. And, uh, mm-hmm. He's awesome. Uh, yeah, he's and he yeah, he's a really good actor. Cool guy. Um Yeah, it's it's a really cool movie. It's um it's kind of a mixture of a documentary with a narrative. So it goes back and forth with the real guys and then the actors that play the guys. Okay, so it's based on a true story. Yeah, it's a true story. Uh-huh. Okay. What's it's the really, really good? What's the synopsis of it? Is there a synopsis it's yet? A, it's a it? it's a art he- like they're a, it's like a art heist. Oh. Like they're stealing. Yeah, an art heist that goes goes bad, and they get arrested, and it's like the story of how they. You've got to know some nefarious people if you're the kind of person that steals art, like really valuable art. You got to know the kind of people that you can actually sell that art to. You can't just be some regular dude that works or it's at Arby's, and you're like, oh, I'm going to steal a Mona Lisa tomorrow, and then what are you going to do with it? <laughs> you, you, nobody, you, you don't know anybody who you're going to be able to sell it to. You've got to have some uh, some dark connections if you're going to be an art thief. Yeah, these guys, uh, they didn't think about that. They were like, oh, shit, they uh, at Arby's? They just wanted to do something, you know, <laughs> do something interesting, and that's kind of what the movie's about, really. It's... Uh, you know, they want to make a name for themselves and, you know, they go about it the wrong way, obviously. Yeah. The guys were the guys were at the premiere. Uh, I met a couple of the guys. They were really nice. Um, and, you know, they spent like seven years in jail. So, they... That's it? Yeah. They, uh, <laughs> they went shit. Yeah, but there's... We know some people that have spent time in jail, too, but... It's, it's crazy how much... Yeah, David Gant. David Gant. It's crazy how much uh, um, how much liberty is taken with some of those movies, though, where c- compared to the real story. Yeah, like, it's crazy. Like David Gant, you're talking about. He's a good friend of ours. He's um, if you've seen that movie Masterminds. Is that, uh, is that yeah, I, I haven't seen it, but I right. yeah, that's based on a true story. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. real the real guy that Zach Galifianakis plays is David Gant. And he's been on our show. We're good friends with him. Um, he he's the actual guy who robbed that like almost twenty million dollars um, from that armor. Louis company. Fargo. And mm-hmm. he, and we you know we've talked to him about you know the movie because the movie was funny. It was a good movie. And and obviously Hollywood has to take its it has to exaggerate things and make you know 
tweak things to make it more entertaining. Otherwise, the true yeah. story, true story, when you're looking at it on paper, it can be like, wow, this is a crazy story. But you still have to like take some poetic license with it. Well, um, and but yeah, it's just funny how much sometimes you know because we knew the real true story from David Gant's lips himself, and then you watch the movie, which is very entertaining. But you're like, okay, this shit did not happen. <laughs> well, the movie they supposedly stole six point six million dollars, and in real life they sold 17 and then he what in the masterminds movie yeah they only sold 6 million yeah and in real life it was really yeah and then he fled to mexico with only twenty five thousand dollars in his pocket that seems like a dumb thing to change <sighs> i don't know why would you well because they were the trying amount? to make it a comedy versus like the actual yeah thing but I got to think that wasn't a comedy one when that stuff was happening. <laughs> uh, no, no. But some of the stuff that happened in the movie, like someone took out took out a hit on him, and oh, like yeah. he was a fear, like fearful of his life. Like that all yeah. that all happened. But they'll they'll just take like like taglines, like headlines of like a, a, a an instance that happened in the overall story. Like okay, so at some point, David Gant did have a hitman go after him. We know that. Everything else we can, you, you know, make up or we can, you know, tweak and exaggerate. Yeah, and like he he had a in real life he had a bunch of credit card debt, so he agreed to like doing the whole situation. And in the movie, it makes him seem like he was forced to do it. Kristen Wiig wooed him. <laughs> Kristen Wiig talked him into that. Shit. Well, yeah, and Kate McKinnon was his wife, so he's got like the perfect. Like both the perfect of both worlds, he's got his actual wife, Kate McKinnon, <laughs> and then his mistress is Kristen Wiig. Like what? But it's just so funny because David Gant, you know, like we know the guy pretty well now, and he's like the sweetest guy you've ever met. You're like, there's no way you robbed twenty million dollars from an armored car company. There's no way you did that. How is that possible? But he did. Yeah, and the, and the only reason why he got caught is because he knew where all the he knew where all of the recording devices were. He's Except a, for he's like one a manager or something, so he had like he, had he was like access. security, yeah. But there was one device that was recording that he didn't know about, and that's what busted him. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's amazing there's... how you talk yourself into doing something like that. I couldn't do it. Yeah, like I'd be thinking about all the 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 cons versus the pros. I'd be like, well, if I get caught, I'm going to jail. Especially when it was physical cash and it took him like two hours to load that van you had two hours while you're loading stacks of cash into a van to like contemplate and, and think like uh, maybe I should be doing this <laughs> yeah maybe I, I should unload or did he get you know he, he got halfway filled up in the back of that van like oh fucking I'm pot committed I gotta keep going now yeah well regardless he was 27 years old like he like he made bad choices maybe at the time or whatever worked out for him worked out but he's today and present time since we've been friends with him he's an awesome amazing person and I'm glad that we oh, got to know him oof, crazy yeah he just had you a love that guy though he's like one of he's nice great <laughs> he's super great uh but kids if you're listening don't rob don't, don't, rob, don't rob banks don't, don't rob, rob banks, anybody don't rob art you know don't rob libraries don't be an yeah. thief Unless yeah. you know, uh, unless you know somebody who could sell that stolen art for you, don't yeah. do it. And be Vikings fans, school. <laughs> uh, so, Kevin, where uh, where can everyone find you online, Instagram, and all that good stuff? And, and where can they find you like soon coming up? What can they look forward to? Oh, um, uh, let's see. Website is uh, kevinljohnson dot com, and then. Twitter is going to be Kevin underscore L underscore Johnson. And then the Instagram, I had to put V in the front because Kevin L. Johnson was taken somehow. So it's V Kevin L. Johnson. Uh, yeah. And then uh, American Animals is um, is my, uh, my latest project right now. Which, and that's uh, all in theaters right now, right? Or coming it's soon? In, it's in limited release. I don't know if it's uh, okay. where it is right now, uh, but I think at the end of the month it should be in like four thousand theaters around the country. So it'll be in a lot more uh, theaters by the end of the month. For sure. And then it's obviously going to end up on some kind of 
like streaming platform, right? Like Hulu oh, or yeah. Amazon or Netflix yeah. or something like that. Yeah, for sure. Cool. I would think Amazon because a lot of stuff hits Amazon. I um, love Amazon the most because I feel like there's more unique things on it to watch. You're an Amazon junkie. I love Amazon. I do. I really do. She spent the new like, show Goliath comes out uh, at oh, I think it's after twelve. On, it's on my list. Have you have you watched the show Red Oaks at all? Uh uh-uh. uh. Is it like is oh. it in that kind of style? Is it no, like it's style? like it's like eighties. Like um, I don't know. Kind of. It's saw, just, I've seen it on the. It's so good. Market. Like you, if you watch it, the music and the the way that they dress and just like and then the show itself is actually like really good. You would like it. Promise. I'll I'll message you and send you the name of it to remind you. But you should watch it. So it's like a One Tree Hill reboot. No, it's not even that at all. It like has it's, trees in the name. Red Oaks is probably. It's a about a. It's about a country club. It has Paul <laughs> Reiser in it. He's like the country club like president, and he's like a total drunk and like just doesn't have his shit together. It's good. It's it's really good. I promise. It's so good. Huh. Is it a thriller? Like, no, it's not a thriller. It's like no. a like a sitcom ish kind of oh, exactly. like kind, kind of, of funny a modern family ish type. Vibe. Yeah, a little bit like that. But okay. they swear and like I don't know. It's just it's it keeps fabulous. your attention, I guess. Like it's not like a riveting show, but you know you could maybe watch it in the background of something. It's good, <laughs> especially oh, for like definitely. an Amazon. It's an Amazon original series, which they're like trying to catch up with everybody else. Oh, they got some good stuff. Like Sneaky yeah. Pete's. I mm-hmm. definitely recommend Sneaky Pete. That's on Pete's my list, too. Oh, so I, haven't, good. I haven't seen any of those. Sneaky I've, Pete I've, and I've Goliath heard, are both on my list. I've heard nothing but good things about those shows. I just feel like once I enter that realm of starting it, I'm like, okay, here we go. I, I feel like it needs to be winter time or something where I have the time to commit to acknowledging that I'm going to watch this, yeah, this yeah. series. Like yeah. Handmaid's Tale, like. I, I committed oh. last year to watching it, and now that the next season, the second season's out, I'm like, my mom's like, did you watch the episode last night? And I was like, no, like, I was actually, like, outside being, like, with oxygen and, like, people, <laughs> but I'd rather be inside watching it, but I feel like it's, like, a wintertime thing. It's a hard show to watch without getting angry. Oh, I yeah, mean, it's a or good, crying. Good show, but- Ugh. It's so emotional. I feel like it's it's exhausting watching it sometimes, but it's great. But it's just you have to be kind of in the mood for it. I think. Yeah, I'm looking, it's a good show. I'm looking it's so for, good. I'm looking forward to the fans' reactions to season two of Ozarks when Kevin Johnson's character uh, becomes a famous country music star. <laughs> and and then like in two years from now, especially when Jason. Bateman's character gets murdered off and then Kevin Johnson like is in his will and he inherits the strip club and that that he becomes Patrick Swayze from <laughs> yeah, you, Roadhouse from you, Roadhouse you end up becoming a bouncer and you're just roundhouse kicking dudes all day <laughs> and he's just gonna get ripped and he's gonna take <laughs> oh that'd be badass <laughs> yeah class like CrossFit and all that stuff and just yep. <laughs> start beating the shit out of people just doing flips and shit <laughs> I don't think you need to be like ripped. Like you don't, you, and you don't even have to do CrossFit. You can just learn like the moves. And be like, don't fuck with me. Yeah, you can be like Steven Seagal. You don't you have to be can, ripped. You can weigh like two eighty and just you don't actually ever move. You just move your arms doing that. Uh, what is it he does? Um, Steven Seagal. Yeah, his. Oh, Steven Seagal. <laughs> He's so overweight now. Under Siege is one of the best movies ever. Do you think that Under Siege, Steven Seagal, or Jean Claude Van Damme Bloodsport would win? Oh, Jean Claude. Jean Claude all day. He do. I was, he, I was he a just, big Jean Claude Van Damme. I was too. Fan. Yes, he dropped down, do those splits, and just punch you in the nuts. Jean Claude all day. <sighs> I remember I went to visit. My mom's from Germany. I went to go visit my cousin, my family, and my cousin, who's my age. I probably hadn't talked to him in like five years. And when we were in seventh grade, I went over there. Maybe it was sixth grade, and I was like, "Hey, you speak English?" He's like, "Yep." And it was like this weird, like we're family, sure, but yeah. we've never like really spoken to each other as teenagers or kind of semi adults. And then the second question to to me from him was, "Do you know Jean Claude Van Damme?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, do you know a blood sport? And I was like, no. 
So I watched Bloodsport for the first time in Germany, in German, with no subtitles, and I still liked it. So that was pretty cool. I also watched Cujo for the first time in Ooh. German without subtitles. <laughs> but he was obsessed with Junk. He used to be like, Junk Live Vendem. Like, that's how he would say it. Yeah, he was big in the early 90s, late 80s, for sure. Yeah. Oh, you there's, know, you know what who, I recommend? Who's the Jean-Claude Van Damme of our time right now? <laughs> you know what I recommend? Um, Jason Statham, maybe, but way better. Whatever. Way he's better. way too skinny, and he's not. Jean-Claude, I mean, when you really break it down, Jean-Claude Van Damme's a little bit of a bitch. He, he's like a gymnast that <laughs> is a, who can do really good roundhouse kicks. He's, yeah, he, he's I'd rather body pick body I but body I would body. rather pick Chuck Norris over Jason Statham. Sorry. Yeah, but Chuck Norris. Yeah, because Jason, Chuck Norris was legit. He was a legitimate like martial uh, champion in was it karate or kickboxing? What the fuck did he do? I don't know. Put put uh, Chuck Norris and uh, what's his face? Uh, the guy a... that does his own stunts. Jackie Chan. Chan? Yeah, Jack. Put Jackie Chan and Chuck Norris together. Who's gonna win? Tom Cruise. Tom Cruise is out. Tom Cruise has superpowers. He's yes. got Scientology powers, apparently. Exactly. He'll so zap people. But Jackie that. Chan and Chuck Norris, <laughs> who's going to win? Chuck Norris all day. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, Jackie Chan Jackie. Jackie Chan is like the Cirque du Soleil of He's broken like every bone in his body. Know, what is Chuck all, Norris broken? Face, Nothing. Faces. His beard. Other his beard got out of place for a second. Other people's bones. That's yeah, because he's not fighting it. No, no, no. Because no, his I, bones are no, unbreakable. No. That's why. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. There's uh, there's actually this show that I recommend checking out um, that Jean Claude Van Damme has on Amazon Prime. It's oh, an Amazon yeah. original. Um, what the hell is it called? I think it's just called, isn't it called Jean Claude Van Damme? Something just Jean Claude Van Johnson. That's what it is. Oh, that's what it's called. Okay. Played, oh, it's like an actual show where he plays somebody different. He plays. He plays himself, but right. this whole time, it's like a, it's kind of a, a little bit of a joke on his whole career. Where this whole time, it's, it's in this universe where like his whole movie career, Bloodsport, all that shit. This whole time, he's been an actor, but he's also been an undercover like secret agent. Yeah, because that's and, what and, he has to do because his, his other career sucks, so he has his, to like so make his, a second one out so of it. So his acting career has Sucked. been a cover for yeah. his secret undercover agent career. It's actually, it, I actually liked it. It wasn't bad. I think it's a good idea, but the reason why he did that is because his actual acting career sucked. So he had to come up with like a you're second. Such, you're such a hater. I'm why not a hater. Why can't you just be happy for him? Okay. Happy for him? He he's like a European dude, right? Like, where is he from? Austria? He's the muscles oh, from Brussels. Same as no. Arnold Schwarzenegger. The muscles from Brussels. That's Arnold. No, Arnold's from Austria. Van Damme's from Brussels. Oh, Belgium? Yeah. Did you know that Belgium was in Brussels? Brussels was in Belgium? Yes. Do you know not, your geography? Not Austria. I feel like the three of us you suck. Van Damme nope. Was from I feel like, no, I knew That's that he racist. wasn't from Austria. I feel like the three of us are super bad at geography. I agree. I know I, I am. I, do I am too. That. I'm embarrassed about how bad I am at geography. I didn't know that Brussels was in Belgium. Belgium. Netherlands. I, all I knew that was that he was the muscles from Brussels. Yeah, I needed to learn my geography like way better. <laughs> all right, it's time to pull this train into the station. <laughs> what station are we at? What country are we in right. geography wise? Right. Are we yeah. south or north of the equator? We are north. Oh, we are? And uh, Kevin L. Johnson is south. Nope, he's still in the same equator as us. South of us. <laughs> he's in the same country as well. <laughs> I know, it's warmer it's down there. It's a different time zone, like an hour ahead of us. Oh, yeah, that's right. Different time. Yeah, that was that was fun last time. When we I always... know. Well, it shouldn't be that difficult, but it's like, okay, where do you live? Uh, I guess it's like maybe an hour or two. It's just weird. To, th to think of that you actually have to think about that stuff but I feel like I should be better at it by now so now are you're done filming you're done filming your movie you're done filming with Ozarks right now are you just kind of in a like a little vacation mode right now um well I'm auditioning for other things and uh you know waiting for the next or not I don't want to say waiting that's always kind of you never want to say waiting but looking for the next gig you know 
Yeah. So after you've got your your first like leading role type gig, I think you should pay back to the to the little people in your origins and do another one of those lotto commercials. <laughs> you know, give back. A little cameo for yeah. North Carolina Education Lottery. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Kevin L. Johnson. Kevin Lord Johnson. Lloyd. <laughs> Thanks for uh, sharing your time with us tonight, man. This has been fun. Yeah, man. I had a blast. I got to learn a lot about, you know, horses and, you know, <laughs> horse yeah. training. And I get, I get to go on stuff. tangents a lot. I think... I feel like we all learned a little something tonight. I feel like we've all uh, we all have the opportunity to take a little something from our time tonight. I feel like we've all grown as 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 adults. Yeah, I'm definitely older now. Um, older, wiser. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm gonna take this this new knowledge, this experience, and I'm gonna use it to conquer the world. I'm gonna do nothing with it. Yeah. Nope. Absolutely not. I mean, I learned it. That's cool. I'm just gonna put it back in the back and move on. Hashtag horse semen. <laughs> uh, on that note. All right, brother. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for having me, y'all. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm-mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Don't mind me. I'ma just grab my stuff and leave. Excuse me, please. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Nope. Fuck this shit, I'm out. All right then. I don't know what the fuck just happened, but I don't really care. I'ma get the fuck up out of here. Fuck this shit, I'm out. <laughs> This episode's done. It's so over. That's it. This is the outro. It's a wrap. This is, this is where we wrap things up. In conclusion to this episode, with <laughs> Kevin L. Johnson, actor extraordinaire. Yes, an oh. all-around <laughs> super nice human being. A uh, star in our eyes and in our hearts of yes. the Netflix original series Ozark. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, that was fun. I like that dude. Super, I'm gonna turn this down yeah. a little bit more. Um, super easy guy to talk to. Really easy, easy and laid back guy to talk to. Um, yeah, and very genuine and just kind of a yeah, like all around good person. Exactly. I'm, fan, so. I'm fans of those peeps. Yeah. We need um, more of them. So yeah, check uh, check out Ozark if you haven't already seen it on Netflix. Not because they uh, they pay us to say that. It's because we watch it and it's actually a really damn good show. Yeah, like when you see the reviews of, of something that's riveting and like, It is what? riveting. It is. It's, it's one riveting. of those shows where you're, every episode, it's like, um, okay. <laughs> and Kevin's <laughs> in it. That just happened. And Kevin's in it. <laughs> Makes um, it twice as good. And that movie he's got out, what was it called? American Animals. Check that out. Mm-hmm. I don't know what theaters it's in. It's in a bunch of theaters, but... Uh, you have access to Google. You can figure it out. Yeah, true. That's very true. Um, all right. We're going to play this episode out for the song by Ocho. Ocho. Called Anybody. Why not? Yeah. <laughs> I like it. You, I all think right. you guys like it, too. We hope you enjoyed this episode. We sure as hell did. And, oh, coming up on uh, on the show... Uh, this month we have Matt Graham. Yes. Survivalist, survival expert. You know we love those people. Primitive skills expert. Yeah, that's another term. Yeah, yeah. There's so he, many titles. He's we'll on. Out which yeah. title he prefers. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, what's that show he's on you've been watching? Dude, you're screwed. Dude, you're screwed. Great name. <laughs> oh, it's so great. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a cool show. We'll, we'll talk. I'm sure we'll definitely talk about yeah. that show. He's been on a bunch of other shows too. Yeah, he's he and he's traveled so many awesome places around the world. Like, I'm super looking forward to chatting with him. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one. Yep. So look forward to that. All right, uh, we're out of here. We're done. Yep, we're out of here. Bye. Right, See you later. later. Bye. Later, Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. Yeah. Bye.
Everybody here can get it. Treat the game like a scrimmage now. Mess up here with the flow. I swear, nigga, got no limits now. I've been balling for a minute. Whole team full of winners. Anybody here can get it. You tuned into the relish now. Anybody here can get it. Treat the game like a scrimmage now. Mess up here with the flow. I swear, nigga, got no limits now. I've been balling for a minute. Whole team full of winners. Anybody here can get it. You tuned into the relish now. Be my swerve, hit the curve. Talk tough, you get murk. Couple niggas doing life. Couple niggas in the dirt. Text your bitch like with the word. Serena Williams, I serve. Bitches coming by the herd. I keep them wet like they surf. I've been ill since birth. Lil' ho, you super thirst. Every day I'm fresh to death. I'm pulling up in a hearse. Fuck yeah, and I'm a worth. I've been a god on the turf. I got a couple different jobs. You know I'm always doing work. Hit a check on Snapchat. Cause I know she can't screenshot. Fake niggas let her eavesdrop. My heart colder than a freeze pop. I'm dope, bitch. Fuck a detox. See out, my nigga spin a block. Headshots be the best shots. Peel off on the body drop. Your chick sweeter than a lollipop. In other words, you a sucker. Posted up out on West Meth. Probably balling up a dugger. Leave the weapon, any glover. Only cuffing after summer. Oh, that's your fucking girl, though. I skirt off with a number. Anybody here can get it. Treat the game like a scrimmage now. Mess up here with the flow. I swear, nigga, got no limits now. I've been balling for a minute. Whole team full of winners. Anybody here can get it. You tuned into the relish now. Anybody here can get it. Treat the game like a scrimmage now. Mess up here with the flow. I swear, nigga, got no limits now. I've been balling for a minute. Whole team full of winners. Anybody here can get it. You tuned into the relish now. Niggas be dying to flex. I'd rather just send me a check. Mention my name in your verse. On mama's, I'm right at your neck. Young nigga, straight from the jacks. These pussies out here just be soft in the sex. Been had my stripes in the hood. Little homie, I'm good. You know that I'm full of that rag. Fight for respect. Take nothing less. Let it to Cali relieve the stress. Word to my flow. Bitch, I'm a pro. All the way up, cause I'm feeling blessed. Maybe I need me a bow. Maybe I need me a jet. Shorty get super soaked. In other words, mama stay wet. Casino popping, placing bets. Car counting, did a deck. David blame my finesse. Magic wand with the left. I'm not the nigga you should press. And jack a pussy like a ref. Study buckets in the game. Fade away, no time left. Catch him slipping at his bedtime. Couple niggas doing fed time. Couple hitters, they on standby. Cautious niggas on a shit slide. Haters always trying to dick ride. I ain't tripping, bitch, I been fly. Butane on my membrane. Got a dragon flow who I spit fire. Anybody here can get it. Treat the game like a scrimmage now. Mess up here with the flow. I swear, nigga, got no limits now. I've been balling for a minute. Whole team full of winners. Anybody here can get it. Get tuned into the relish now. Anybody here can get it. Treat the game like a scrimmage now. Mess up here with the flow. I swear, nigga, got no limits now. I've been balling for a minute. Whole team full of winners. Anybody here can get it. Get tuned into the relish now.